utilizing opportunities. We are talking about wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to make a difference in your society. Wisdom is simply knowing what to do and doing it. It's knowing the way to go and getting there. It's knowing the truth and applying it to triumph. That's wisdom. The world utilize means to make practical and effective use of a thing. I say utilize means to make practical and effective use of a thing. It is a willingness to use proper means to achieve a desired end. Opportunity is a situation that makes it possible to do something, achieve a goal you set for yourself. It's a situation that makes you pos- make it possible, that makes it possible f- to do something. That's opportunity. And I said, wisdom is simply knowing from God's word which way to go and how to handle situations. To make them produce desired results. I said wisdom is knowing from God's word. Which way to go. And how to handle situations. To make them produce desired results. Simply wisdom is knowing how to make life profitable. In Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. It said wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding. If wisdom is that important, then don't play down on wisdom. Even the Bible describes Jesus as the power and the wisdom of God. But many just talk about power, they don't ever talk about wisdom. You only hear people talk about wisdom. They say Jesus, in comprehension, is simply Wisdom and power. So the power of God is the soul. If you take, if you rest on power, you rest on 50%. The two must be together. Shout hallelujah. We are talking about opportunities. We are presented with opportunities every day for greatness. Every day of our life. Great men and women trace their greatness to opportunities utilized. Every great man, every great man will tell you an opportunity came like this and I utilized it. May you utilize the next one coming your way in the name of Jesus. God gives every one of us opportunities. Everyone. But opportunities are usually dressed and coveralls. The reason many people miss opportunities is because often they come covered with coverall. What the common man calls overall, but coverall. Is that true? They are enveloped. They are covered. Most times you don't see them. I pray your eyes will open today in the name of Jesus. While studying, I read a story from a book during real life story, a true story. During the Second World War, World War II, a woman worked in a delicacy in Los Angeles, California. That is delicacy a shop that says ready to eat food. This woman was a hard worker. The owner of the shop said to her, customers are constantly asking for pile. Piles, they were not selling piles, so they were asking always if they called, they said, you put her piles. So he asked her if she could prepare piles in addition to her assignment. She could have given excuses because she was already loaded with so much work. She was the one cleaning. She was the one doing so many things. But the nurse said, can you prepare pies? They always come in to ask us for pies, and we don't do pies here. So she accepted the responsibility. 
She started and customers liked what she was doing, so the place was rushed with that. And then later, when she discovered that she can make pie, she now had to start her own pile business. It was hard at first, very hard for her. She almost gave up, but the husband encouraged her not to give up since she was good in making pies. He said to her, he, he resigned, in fact. The husband had to quit his job and join her, and the entire family got involved in her pile business. In 1964, her name is called Maria Callender. She had 115 pile shops or restaurants in 14 states of the United States of America. In 1986, Ramada Inn Incorporated bought her pile business for approximately $90 million. You may say, I wish I had such an opportunity. <laughs> but you've had many opportunities without utilizing them. Many. Many have come past. God speaking in 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9, it said, for a great door, look at that scripture, shall we read together? For a great door, an effectual is open what? There's a command there. That means everybody has had an open door. But there are many adversaries. We always think of it in warfare. God said, everybody has had an open door. But they come with so many challenges and problems that you, you just say, I beg, I can't face them. There is nobody who has not had an open door. Not one. He said, I said before you, look at it. For a great and effectual door is open unto me. There's a command there. That means every one of us has had opportunities that we do not utilize. And there are many what? Things that will make you give up. That's the meaning. Not always think that problems are always to kill you. Now, hear this and hear me well. There's this story of the Chinese bamboo. Some of you have heard the story before. I pray the next opportunity you will not miss it. The Chinese bamboo, for first four years, with watering daily, every day, the growth will be very minimal. It will be so insignificant. For four years, it will not see, it seems as if anything is happening to that Chinese bamboo for four years. However, in the fifth year, the Chinese bamboo grows to 90 feet. For four years, maximum is with five feet. It won't go beyond that for four years. The challenge with many of us is that we want the fifth year results without the four years application. Did you hear me at all? <laughs> we want results. Bah, 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 bah. Yet, we don't want to follow the process. I said we want the fifth year what? Results without the four years application. There was a man called Goliath. I spoke about him yesterday. In my studies, I discovered that problems are not really problems. They are opportunities. Many of us, when problems come, the first thing we do is I will bind this devil. Cast this boss out of my office. It's actually an opportunity for you to be lifted. When Goliath came, everybody saw Goliath as a problem. David saw him as an opportunity. <laughs> the whole Israel saw Goliath as a problem. Only David saw him as what? Opportunity for a crown. And he utilized it. You will utilize your own. In life, fortune is closer than misfortune. You become a victim of misfortune when you miss your opportunity knocking at your door. When you miss the opportunity knocking, then misfortune starts. When you are conscious, it becomes magnetic. I pray today you will not miss any opportunity that God will bring your way. Yeah. Opportunity is the promoter and agent of change. Every change 
It's a result of utilized opportunity. Every change. Miracle marriages, they come by opportunities. They come by what? Promotions to the office, they come by opportunities. Change of jobs, liftings in career and business, all respond to various opportunities. Various what? You are asking God for marriage? God has brought many husbands and wives past you. Am I talking? But you never utilize the opportunity. A young man stood by you and said, can I get water? He looked at him like this. This one. And you don't know what he carries. Life story in this town. A young man wanted to marry a young lady. Life story, they told me. And he decided to go to an office. She has heard his name, but she has never seen him in person. Top young man. He knows that she doesn't know him in person. So he wore jeans and t-shirt. And had no plan. He just let him go to the office so that he can know who she is. Somebody has talked so much. So he went there. The first person he met was she. Life story. I said, please, I'm looking for this person. She walked past him. She said, you can ask the secretary. She will direct you. <laughs> he said, this one, I will not marry her. La, la. <laughs> By the time she realized that as the young man, they've been telling her of, it was late. And who she's married to today cannot be compared to him. She saw the opportunity passed. Because it was on jeans and t-shirt. Opportunity come covered. Opportunity come what? I'll tell you a story that may be very touching. My wife was not the one I was first proposed to. No, don't think so. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I'll tell you a life story. I told a young girl I'll marry you. She said, <laughs> you, for Bible school. You go feed me. That was the exact language she used. She's a member of this church. She said, you, Bible school, you go feed me. The opportunity passed. Another woman saw a man with a great future. <laughs> opportunity come every day. But they are in overall, cover all. I pray God will open your eyes to see the next opportunity. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. Opportunity, I said, is God's design to ensure a change of position for you. Opportunities are endless. They are worth they're endless. Every greatness is a product of opportunities utilized. Missing opportunities is missing chances of advancement. People don't really lack opportunities, they're only blind to them. Do you hear me? People don't what? Don't really lack opportunity. They are only what? Blind to see opportunities. The next, I repeat with authority, the next opportunity you will not miss it. Some of you, the man to employ you stood before you. Yet you could not greet him. Are you getting me now? The man passed. The man God wants to use for the next phase of your life is just by your corner. Yet, you don't know what to do. Opportunities come every day. Now I, said, I said, a great and effectual door is open unto me. They are not closed. But for every opportunity, something will cover it. It's your ability to design. 
Blessings that come with utilizing opportunities. Let me tell you. Blessings that what? Come with utilize opportunities. What are the blessings that come with utilize opportunities? Number one. Opportunities lifts and elevates you to a higher level. Opportunities lifts and elevates you to what? A higher level. A typical example is David and Goliath. In First Samuel 17, that was where David was lifted. Someone will be lifted in the name of Jesus. The ten spies, we spoke so much about them yesterday, saw giants as obstacles, while Caleb and Joshua saw them as what? Opportunities to win crowns of victory. Numbers 13. Yesterday we talked so much about them. They were lifted by getting what? Opportunity and utilizing it. So here. Your lifting is coming. Amen. Number two, opportunity brings you before great men. Opportunity brings you before what? <laughs> in Genesis 41 you all know the story of Pharaoh and Joseph Pharaoh said there's no one as wise as you are true an opportunity came for Joseph for who? for Joseph you remember he was in prison opportunity can meet you anywhere you can be in the worst place an opportunity to come there it was in prison when the opportunity came. It was not in the palace. It was where? It was in prison the opportunity came. But if Joseph was smart enough to recognize it. Before I will go for what I'm teaching further, I will tell you, Joseph did not just appear. He prepared for the opportunity. Is that true? Towards my closing, I will shout out. And he utilized it very well. He did what? And then we all know the story of Joseph. A New Testament Joseph will be born today. Yeah. We all know David and Jonathan in 1 Samuel 18, 1 to 4. An opportunity came where two of them became friends. They were tired, soul tired. And it was Jonathan who mentioned David to his father. And Saul invited him. Is that true? And then he got access to the palace. And from there on, we all know. An opportunity came for me to meet David Oedipo. And that was where my life took a new turn. I made sure I utilized the word opportunity. There are people you meet, your destiny turns. They won't give you money. Bishop Oedipo has not given me the first 1,000. I won't even take, even if he gives me. But... I saw opportunity that will make me to rise. Are you getting me, sir? Are you hearing me? There are people you meet like this in life, your life turn. So if you just meeting me, is what changed your life? Through? May you never miss your own. It brings you before what? Great people. Number three, Opportunity utilized guarantees prosperity. Opportunity utilized guarantees prosperity. Paul was speaking in Philippians 4. He said, boy, ye lacked opportunity. In verse 10 precisely. You lack what? He said, the reason why you are not prosperous, you lack what? Opportunity. In verse 15 he said, Giving and receiving. Giving and what? Receiving. Let me say this to you. Every God ordained project is a covenant opportunity that creates a prosperous future for you. When you lack opportunity, you remain in lack. If you are in any church where you lack something to sow, you will remain poor. 
Listen. Utilizing opportunity opens your heaven. Opens your what? Many have testified as they gave to the cathedral. Poof, that was an opportunity for them to prosper. Is that true? Some pests are lifted today because of the cathedral project. Now, there's always an opportunity for you to plant a seed in order to reap a bountiful harvest. So utilize every opportunity to sow towards the advancement of God's kingdom and see if you will not prosper. If you know what? Every poor man did not utilize an opportunity. <laughs> you are not poor because you're poor. You are poor because you do not utilize what? Opportunity to give. It came. Opportunity what? Came, but you didn't give. That's why opportunities come every day. Are you getting me? Number four. Opportunity to serve guarantees promotion. Opportunity to what? Serve guarantees what? Promotion. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Job 36 verse 11. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything shall be what? There are people no matter what you preach, they will never win souls. But they forget that their promotion is in the opportunity to win souls. There was a man called Nehemiah. This young man saw an opportunity to repair the walls of Jerusalem and ended up a leader. Ended up what? His promotion came when he repaired the walls of Jerusalem. Somebody will end up a leader. Every man's promotion is tied to an opportunity somewhere that you lies. And I'll share with you what happens when opportunities are not utilized. What, what? Happens when opportunities are not, what? Utilized. A. It gives room for another to take your place. It gives room for another to take what? Your place. Who was on the throne when King David, when Goliath was insulting Israel? King Saul. King Saul refused to respond to the opportunity to fight Goliath because kings go to war at that time. And he also refused to obey God completely. So he created room for David to be king. <laughs> Did you hear me at all? Hmm? If you read 1 Samuel 15, 22 and 1 Samuel 17, you see the two stories. He refused to obey God, he refused to fight Goliath, and then the opportunity came for who? David. Another story in the Bible that opportunity when you don't utilize, a woman called, you, everybody talk about Queen Esther, Queen Esther, Queen Esther. Queen Esther was not the first queen. There was a queen called Vashti. Vashti was invited by the king. She ignored the request of the king. It was at that point, the king said, call me another virgin. Esther chapter 2 verse 17. Let me show you. So when opportunity comes and you are arrogant, it will leave you. And the king loved Esther above all the women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of who? Read the beginning. Vashti was invited but she was so arrogant. That's how some of you are. You are so arrogant. 
I want to talk to a young lady. Who are you? Is it because of church you talk to me? And then tomorrow the young man marries. And they watch on television. They say, well, this is the MD of the place. That young man proposed to me. You now start fighting the wife. We don't find trouble. But you look down on him. Vashti was who was there. She had opportunity to be queen. But she ignored the request of the king. Is that true? Are you hearing what I'm saying? The anointing you don't value cannot enhance you. There are people living in this church. Be blessed! They say, me too, I can say be blessed. Me say, I can say it. What is so much about you? That's why you don't have one testimony. Two of us are not equal. That you carry my, not even, I'll be mad to think me and Oedekwa are equal. That's that. Oedekwa will be also, he won't do it to think that him and Oedekwa are equal. No, everybody has what? Sugar size. I know my father is so humble that he respects his fathers. And I'm humble, I respect him. There is no result that will make you to say your father is not your son. No matter how well you are, your father is your father. Even if your father is in the village, he's your father. Opportunity will come when your father will say, my son, I bless you. You can't bless your father. Even in biologically, you can't bless your father. Hope you know. Honor thy father, thy mother. This is a honor thy son. <laughs> that may be well with you. So it's your father who is a village man, a fisherman, and a farmer who will say, my God bless you. You can't tell your father, Papa, God bless you. No way. But many of us lack we don't understand when opportunity comes. Say so here. Shout a better hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. Whatever robs you from utilizing opportunity has robbed you of your future. Did you hear me? I said, whatever robs you from utilizing any opportunity has robbed you of your what? Future. Opportunity once lost may never be recovered. May never be regained because yesterday is gone. Yesterday is what? It's gone. Now opportunities are everywhere. Are what? Everywhere. How to identify opportunities? Because they're everywhere. Even now, as you came to church, opportunity pass you. Or a robot said miracles. Walk past us every day. How to identify opportunities? How to do what? Number one, where there is problem, where there's a anywhere there is a problem, there's an opportunity. Anywhere you see problem, there's what? Just the opportunity is there when you see problem. How do you do? Be the one to provide solution. Moses solved the problem of slavery. True? That was opportunity. That was what? Opportunity. He solved the problem and then he became the greatest leader in the Old Testament. Is that true? Esther solved the problem of genocide. For the Jews, she became a queen. Is that true? David solved the problem of who? Goliath, he became a king. Jesus solved the problem of sin and death. The greatest problem of humanity ever faced. That's why we are still talking about him today. Which problem are you solving? Every time there's a problem somewhere, that's an opportunity for you to be great. Are you getting me, sir? So we ask yourself, which problem are you solving? Life is all about solving problems. If you solve more problems, you have more opportunities to make it in life. So here. Anywhere there is problem, there's an opportunity for somebody to rise. So here. Mm. I pray today the Holy Ghost will open your eyes to see problems. 
And you know what the problem? When we see problems, we pray against problems. Instead of thinking of how to solve them. You know, if Goliath was to be here now, you would have prayed against Goliath. He said, Goliath, don't appear again. God, you know, God gives the problems to lift you. The economic challenge in Nigeria today is actually for people to prosper. My wife showed me something. When she sees something, she has my research officer of social media and internet. Before service, she ran up to me. She said, see, see, see a young man here. A young man here. Because of what you teach. People hear your teaching. I said, what is it? A young man has a fish farm, a medical doctor, has a fish farm in Jaws. There's multi-million. It has about two million fishes. You know why he put it in Jaws? In the north, no fish. They have meat. So fish farm in the north is very lucrative. And he's a multi-millionaire. Somebody is saying, you can't get fish here. You can't get fish here. You can't get fish here. Somebody say, then this is money. This is what? But uh, somebody is busy complaining. No fish in the north. No fish. You are busy analyzing problems. The, the, all, the, all his mates are traveling overseas. He has a fish farm. Do you understand? Mm? So, solve problems. Because there's an opportunity for you to be blessed. I will talk to that one to pastors. I won't teach you that one. It's not necessary. I meditate a lot. I was awake till 6 a.m. past 6 before I slept this morning. In my deep meditation, he said, any pastor looking for money is stupid. When I, I was shocked. <laughs> he said, every pastor is rich. I say, how? He said, including pastors working on their founders. He said, all they need to do is to solve, find their area of strength and solve problems. I say, how? He said, if a pastor is very good in marital settlement, everybody had the marriage problem will go to him. And when he settles the marriage of a rich man, any money he's looking for, they will give him. <laughs> if you look at his strength, if a pastor is very good in healing, no matter the counseling, everybody sick will go to him, even if it's under somebody, for sickness to be healed. And when they are healed, they will say, Pastor, God bless. There's no man blessed of God that will not honor the man. So instead of pastors going to look at solving problems, they are busy running after money. Some even resigned to go for to politics. Full time. But one of them came to me and said, I want to politics. I said, you sure? I said, God call you. <laughs> <laughs> what is he going to policy for? <laughs> and it kills because if God truly call him, he goes to money, he won't get it. I don't mean part time, full time. So, no pastor should bother. What am I doing for you now? Am I not solving your problem? I'm solving spiritual problems. Am I lacking? You saw to, my, to me left and right, true? Do I ask you? No, you saw. Because I solved your what? Even when people say, don't give to your pastor, you say, shut up. <laughs> Who told you I won't give him? <laughs> because some people even tell you, are you okay to be given to your pastor? They say, you, you don't know. This man is solving my spiritual problem. So find the problem we are created to solve and money will come. Everybody, every human has a problem to solve. Why do I give money to my wife? She solves problem. My wife prays five times a day, minimum four. She prays, I will tell you, early morning prayer. She prays morning. Then she prays the 7 o'clock prayer we pray online. Then she pray, comes to join you at 12 o'clock. She prays in the evening for the family. And then if they, she has online two times a week, so minimum in a day she prays is four. Then some days five. Every day. And every prayer, she has one prayer point for me. One, two. So she doesn't need to ask me. Because I hear her. Oh God, my husband will die. <laughs> Are you <having> that? <laughs> so even if you wish me dead, my wife say, my husband no go die. So she doesn't need to beg me. I say, take. Even if you don't want, take. 
What's your solving problem? Which problem are you solving for your husband? You call it like from morning to night. <laughs> when he's coming home from work, he's afraid. He said, No, they give me something. When you go give me something, where they make him fear? <laughs> There's no man you give peace that will not give you money. And the woman yelling at me? He said, a wicked man. You know wicked. Every day you quarrel up. Every day you quarrel up. Before you will even enter your door, you have started to quarrel. So the man even to come home, is afraid. So when he closes from work, he stays three hours extra. He said, most men don't go close. He said, I see the work. <laughs> you know why? So when he gets home, as he's getting home, you eat and just sleep. If you see a man like that, the home is not conducive. No man whose home is conducive that will not come home early. Any home the man does not come home, the woman has not made the home conducive. Because women determine the atmosphere of a home. Are the women hearing me? Make your home an environment where he will not find it anywhere else. So here. You are born to solve problems. Each person is to solve what? Problems. So identify the problem you are born. It may be a talent. It may be a gift. It may be something. There are pastors amongst us who today, if they talk about marriage, you will fold your hands. So every marital issue, if you solve the problem there, they will travel from one city to meet him. And that's where his resources will come from. Some, the amount is very sweet that even if you're depressed, when you, they talk to you, you'll be happy. So find your strength. So it's not the salary they pay, Pastor, that means how he will be rich. It's a problem source for the people. Eh. And there's no pastor who is not gifted in one area or the other. Don't try to be like John. John must not be like Peter. Each one has his own strength. Peter was different. Peter was boldness. John was love. James was wisdom. Yes, each one go to your own area and sharpen that area. So whoever has problem in that area looks for you. Even if you're working under somebody. So it's not salary that determines your lifting. It's your, what you utilize, the problems you solve for people. Is that clear? Who? Number two. How many of you will solve problems? Will you solve problems? If they bring problems to your office now, won't you say, no, 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 this man is overlaboring me. Let me say to all of you working. When they give you, your boss give you extra work, do it. If you solve it, the boss keeps you. There are some offices, you see, a boss will keep calling a particular person. A particular person. That does not mean that you, no, someone say, he doesn't like us. No, that person is the person who is able to solve his problem. It's every time he likes to call you, so he doesn't like to call you. He will call you and he will shout. He will correct you. Two. How to identify opportunities. When you are faced with challenges. When you're faced with what? Challenges. When you are faced with what? Challenges. No opportunity is void of challenges. I said before you what? A great and effectual is open up. There are many what? Masters. Face it and come out victorious. A man called Sir Edmund Hillary got to the, to the summit of Mount Everest. But he faced challenges. You know what he said? He said, it's not the mount you conquered. We conquered ourselves first. So when you see challenges, you see what? How did I get into a healing ministry? It was HIV. I was not into healing this way until HIV came. When HIV ravaged the world, and I heard a pastor who stood by my side say, he will never pray for anybody with HIV. He will not try it. I said, sir, what did he say? He said, pastor, don't lay hands on them or me, I won't try it. I said, then if we don't pray, who will be the ones to pray? At that point, people were dying. No cure, no neutral drugs. Now they've already found permanent cure to it. Are you aware that science has found permanent cure to HIV? Then no, no drug of any kind. HIV, you are gone. And I said, God, what, what is it? What do we do? In the process, he said, Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. And when light came on that scripture, everyone which I prayed for from that, they got healed. 
That was how I stumbled into. The challenge was there. Are you getting me now? He created an opportunity for me to get into healing ministry. Say right here. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So when there's a challenge before you, it's an opportunity for you to be lifted. Don't dodge challenges. Face challenges. It gives you what? If there was no challenge of Goliath, there wouldn't have been a King David. Check every wealthy man. There was one challenge or the other they faced to come out. Is that true? Some became rich when their parents died early. Some became rich when nobody gave them chance. Are you getting me? May you never dodge from challenges. The beauty of the orange is not in the orange, it's when it is squeezed. That's what you call orange juice. So when challenges come, they will squeeze you, but the juice in you will come out. Are you getting me? So the challenge before you is to lift you. It's not to kill you. Are you getting me? Running from challenges does not remove the challenges. You come back to meet them. Hmm? You are not employed. You run to another country. Who told you you employed there? What guarantees? <laughs> Face the word. Face it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Number three. Roman figure. Dear the impossible and get the incredible. How to identify opportunities? Dear the what? Something people have said is impossible. Do it. Before Peter walked on water, outside Jesus, no mortal man has walked on water. In Matthew 14 29, Peter, if remember, said he sank, but why didn't John come out to walk? They were all inside the boat, true? They were all inside the boat. Peter was one man who does, he was, he was fearless. He said, and he said, Peter was the only one who was courageous to ask him, say, if he said you are Jesus, bid me to come. He said, come. And when Peter, what, was come down out of the ship, he did what? He walked. He walked on water. Which no mortal man has ever done outside Jesus. Oh, nobody has done it. Do it. That's an opportunity for you to do it. Nobody has ever written a book like this. Write it. Nobody has opened a shop like this. Open the shop. Dear to be the one to make the difference. Am I communicating with you? Every time you see yourself, nobody has done something. That's an opportunity for you to do it. Now listen. Before we started glory reign from metamorphosis from one crusade to another crusade, we have had names, so don't think. We had healing, deliverance. Um, what's, you, are the, you were in the studio before. What is it? Uh-huh. Healing, deliverance, and miracle service. It used to be in the studio before as a pastor. Healing, miracle, and deliverance. That was what we started with. Healing, miracle, deliverance, service. Then one day they came to me and said, in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, nobody does a big program except a man of God with somebody. I said, ah, what is this? They said, if program people must gather, you must get another man of God from another city. Then you put your face by the person. That that is the only way crowd can come for any program. I said, the people who are coming there, the Christ they have, is it different from the Christ inside us? They said, no, it's not possible to do any program alone. I said, no way, I'll be the first. So 2003, we printed posters with only my face. No big name in quotes. So the whole pastors met. They said, this guy, his ambition, quote, is very... It's too much. What makes him think that people will come to the program? A man of God of blessed memory, after the old thing said, Pastor, let me tell you the truth. Do you know we met? 
As pastors and brothers said, this boy, this boy who just came yesterday, thinks that he knows too much. This already was on. That's how I used to call this Oedipo. Some Some people hate me, it's not because of me. They hate me with all the hatred they have for Oedipo. Whoever hates Oedipo, they transfer to me automatically. (laughs) Two times three, let me tell you the story, and then I will take the last part and finish, which will not take more than six minutes. And they said, who is this young man who said he wants to do crusade in this town? This town, this town, this town, civic center of all places. The civic center was like a big place. Now, even if you want to do (laughs) Osha's meeting, it will fool. That is ushers of salvation ministries. <laughs> Not the whole church, or just ushers of salvation ministries in Puerto Rico. that will contain. <laughs> then it was like a big place. They said, who is this young man? How can he say what to do? Crusade? Nobody has done it. So, by the first day, the place was full. Second day, no space. They said, ah. This thing work for about three years. Three years. So three years over, they said, seven years. Seven years over, they said, ten years. Ten years past, I said, I'm making the go away. <laughs> Very soon, those who are mocking you will leave you to go forward. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Please, utilize what? Opportunity. If nobody has done it, be the first to do it. Don't say nobody has opened this kind of shop. Open it. Don't say nobody has done this kind of business. Be the best to do it. Dear the impossible and do the incredible. That's how to get opportunities. Nobody before Peter walked on water. He was the first to say water. You know how I know? Yes, he sank, but you know he still walked back. Listen, the Bible, read the Bible. He walked to the boat. Jesus not carrying him to the boat. That means after his son, he lifted him, he still walked into the boat. I'm not understand. Listen. And just come on to me. You know he sank by fear. But when Jesus lifted him out, the Bible did not say Jesus carried him to the boat. That means after he lifted him, he still had faith to walk inside the boat. So even if you fell before, bounce back again. Because he walked into the boat with Jesus. Jesus did not carry him inside the boat. There's no way Jesus would have lifted him as heavy as he is to the boat. So in case something you fell before now, another opportunity is what? Coming. You will not miss it anymore. Yeah. You will not miss it anymore. Yeah. And most times, just a step to break through is when everything will look as if they want to. You know, the Bible said, the boisterous wind. So you may think that life is collapsing. No, it's an opportunity for the next phase. When the battle is fierce, so hot, God is telling you something's about to happen. Everything look as if they are collapsed. Just the miracle is by the corner. So here. Don't give up at that point. Don't give up at that point. Stand strong and you'll make it in the name of Jesus. Let me close on this note. Attributes of those who will utilize opportunities. These are the attributes. Attributes of those who will utilize what? Opportunities. I'll give you five of them. I won't take more than a minute to tell you. These are the, if you have these attributes, you will utilize any opportunity to come your way. Attributes of those who will utilize what? Opportunities. Number one, they are disciplined. They are what? People that will utilize opportunities are what? Disciplined. They bring themselves into law. They know what to do at the right time. I ask yourself, are you disciplined? Discipline with time. Discipline with your speech. Discipline even your taste. In your what? Do you know you have to discipline your taste? Yes. There are things you shouldn't wear now, which you wear tomorrow. There are cars you shouldn't drive now, which you will drive tomorrow. There are houses you shouldn't live now, that you live tomorrow. Yes, you have the opportunity to have money now, but don't go and first and foremost buy something that you know tomorrow you can afford. First invest. First what? Are you getting what I'm saying? Two, they are fearless. They are what? They are fearless. 
people who utilize opportunity are what? They are fearless. Nothing makes them to be afraid. I command fear to die. Yeah. It's a God that's not given us the spirit of fear. Second Timothy 1 7. But a power of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy 1 7. Fear is a spirit. People that have the opportunity have no what? They don't fear anything. Three, they are obedient. They are what? They are obedient. They are obedient. They are what? God can't tell them something and they delay. Every opportunity comes when you don't delay. As God is speaking, you are what? Doing it. Now, let's, let me explain to you today. Many of you are praying for prosperity. Any day you hear a voice say, give. Don't pray. It's God. I'm, I'm a very deep person to that. The moment a voice, does not mean they must speak even in your heart. So there's a give. Satan will never tell you to give. Once you hear give, God wants to lift you. At that point, don't ask questions. Which voice is telling me to give? Just give. Watch. Anytime you obey such voice, you prosper. Are you getting me? But most times, we hear. We not say after. This morning, I prepared what I'll do with it. I can't take it off now, for now. Do you know, even some people, the way people give, they, they complain. They say, why are you giving like this? Can't you give small, small? You give small, small, you prosper small, small. So, there are people who get angry. It's not their money, oh. It's your money you're giving, oh. They get angry. So, the way you're giving self, is that how you should be giving? That's why your giving must not be known by other people, even if you're a husband or wife. Except the person you're married to is a very open-hearted person. There are people, if a wife knows what the man is giving, she will say, husband, for what now? Now this is okay, they give God for what to me, I don't chop. <laughs> she forgot that it is what is giving that will determine how breakthrough will come. And there are men too, who, if wife is giving, they say, my wife, the way you're giving, is not too much? Yeah! There is not too much giving to God. Because God himself gave you too much, his son. So don't, there's no overgiving. In fact, it's better you overgive to overget. Permit me. Are you hearing me? Be obedient. Be what? Some of you, God spoke since you made vow. Cathedral vow. Your, which voice in one year again? <laughs> so I have not paid the vow to now. So somebody came to me, a man of God. He said he wants to pay a vow that God spoke to me. I said, my friend, go and put your offering. Don't disturb me here. He said, God told me, almost after nine years, he said, God told me, now, I want to pay my vow. I said, it's you and God, go and pay. Nine years. He came to me, he said, Pastor, Papa, I would have paid this vow since, but, you know, things, I said, that's why things were hard, because your vow did not pay. There's one few who vow when Mike Mundo came, you have not paid it today. <laughs> you vow. And dollar has gone up, so how are you going to pay it? <laughs> you buy $1,000. But what you advise that if you like, go to that church, you go pay. Because vow is not all God and not get. Is it better you don't vow <laughs> than vow? And if you vow, you must pay. No sorry in vow. <laughs> Some another amount to cause it to deflect to sin. Never say before the interest was an error. Therefore, it should have been destroyed. Verse 5 first. Verse 5. I think verse 5. Better is it that thou should not vow than thou should vow and not pay. Do you hear that? Okay. Obey. Number 4. The fourth attribute. They seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the counsel and counsel from mentors. They seek the guidance of what? The Holy Spirit. And counsel from mentors. The fourth attribute of those who have opportunity is that they seek the guidance of what? The Holy Spirit. And counsel from mentors. Finally, number five. They understand divine timing. They understand divine what? They understand divine 
timing. They know when to utilize the opportunity. Is that true? In First Chronicle twelve thirty two, it said, "And the children of Saka, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought worth to do. The heads of them were two hundred, and all their brethren were at their command. Such persons they know when to appear. When to what? Appear. They know when to utilize the time. Because just imagine if nineteen ninety six I never gave. Can I give now? That project has passed. I knew the timing that this is my time to sow and not to beg. True? Am I communicating with you? They know when the timing comes. So I hear. Are you hearing me? Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Finally, always expect opportunities. Always expect what? Always. Are you expecting one? Are you expecting one? Are you expecting opportunities? And how will you know? They will come and cover all. Don't take opportunity will come and show you an opportunity. That's not how opportunities come. Embrace opportunities when they come your way. Embrace what? When they come your way. Then prepare for opportunities. Prepare for what? Let me say this. Do you prepare for opportunities? Hmm? Are you hearing me? When Joseph was called, that's the last scripture, I'm done. When Joseph was called, do you know Joseph did not just go? Let me show you from the Bible. Genesis 41, 14. See what Joseph did. He knew this was an opportunity for him to be in the palace. Is that true? Do you know Egyptians, as at that time, don't like people keeping bears? If you're coming to the palace, it must be neat. It must be neat to appear before the king. So Pharaoh knew, so Joseph knew that coming out of prison, he was looking haggard. So look at what the Bible says. Then Pharaoh sent and called what? Take note. And they brought him hastily, quickly, out of the wharf. What did he do? And he shaved himself. Can you now, for instance, you are having a finance company. You now keep this dreadlock. Do you know why they don't allow bankers to keep long beard? You will never see a banker with long beard because they handle money. Why don't bankers say, I can do anyhow? So they keep beard. They don't allow them because they know that people won't trust you with their money. If you appear like that. Did you hear me? There are some way you will dress, nobody will ever address you. In fact, they will miss your address. Somebody wants to marry you. And they say, Can I propose to you? For the first time you're meeting him. He said, Me, I like pepper soup. <laughs> Even if you like pepper soup, hold your truth. That is your first time of meeting him. He said, this lady, she's no different from others. Are you here? I mean? Never appear when opportunity comes careless. Never appear what? Careless. And you know how the northern Nigeria, when I talk, listen to me today, an opportunity came. This is my that went to me to, to Arawa. They, they said they want two very top clerics to speak, one a Christian, one a Muslim. The Muslim cleric was this, the most radical cleric in this country. He took a photograph with me. He said, Pastor, can I have a privilege to snap with you? He, everything he was doing was asking for my He said, can I have a privilege? I said, no, why not? Take a picture with me. He said, I listen to you. Do you know I listen to you? Pastor David. This guy is the most radical in this country. And I knew that was an opportunity for the Muslim world to hear me. So when I appeared in Kaduna, <laughs> I didn't say Genesis chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 6, I didn't say so. <laughs> but everything I was talking was from the Bible. But I didn't quote 
Genesis. I say, you know, God created his own image. So to destroy man is not the best. Because nothing created by God is like him. Where am I coming from? Genesis chapter 1. I said, so when you begin to destroy man, it means you have no respect for God, no matter your religion. Genesis chapter 1. I said, God has so much value for man, he doesn't joke with man. For God so loved the world, he gave. But I didn't say Genesis, John 3, 16. When I was done, a business more flew with me. We took a, 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 a private jet. 90, if not 80% of the hall left, all Muslims left the hall. These are the radical Muslims. They said they are not going to listen to the man. So I had to do something for them to listen. They said they are going. They said, Edit, they want to hear, they don't hear and finish. They, they were beating drum, drum to follow me. When I mean, these are, they were hitting drum. They said, we don't, we don't do. Say, we don't want you anything again. We don't want you anything again. We don't want you anything. You do it, don't talk, don't finish. Nigeria problem, we don't solve them. Don't want <laughs> that was where the radical revolution of my meeting the Northern Muslims started. You know, when you talk to youth, you're talking to nations. Because they came from all the states of Nigeria, every state of Nigeria. So they say, eh, somebody's like this. So I entered the Islamic world. Today, anywhere I go in the north, even if I appear in Abuja, you see somebody who covered face say, Pastor, I listen to you. Even as I'm talking, they're listening. <laughs> Never appear anywhere careless. When God gives you opportunity, it's right here. You are to make an address in your office. <laughs> they say, today come and present speech. You now write the speech as if you are primary six. You forgot that that is the day you are talking to with who? And I say, um, I was so busy, you know, no time self to prepare this speech. Then you now start eating like somebody with the sick. Be determined <laughs> to make the best. Are you people hearing what I'm talking? <laughs> They say, this man, why is it amongst lecturers? There are lecturers you never forgot. And there are some lecturers you forgot their names. Why? The ones who had the opportunities to affect your life, they affected you. Some only sold your hand out. In fact, when you're leaving school, you cause them. You say, this man will die quick. <laughs> they had the opportunity to affect your life, but they were after handouts. Why some affected you that even when you left school, Till my headmistress went to be with the Lord, I was taking care of her. She had no son, her only son died. She said, I was, she, from primary school, she affected me, but I did not forget her name. One day I was teaching and I said, there's a woman like this, the children came and said, it's our grandmother, it's our mother. She's going to be with the Lord now. Why? She affected me. Teachers may not have money, but you don't play with them. One profession that they may not have money, but nobody toys with teachers. Check well, any teacher who affected you 20 years, 30 years, you won't forget the teacher. He said, you know, they used to say, sir. They don't call them, but they say, sir, don't come. <laughs> These days, you say, teacher, they say, sir, don't come. That's how the village. They even, in any the village, the whole village, we cut out and say, it's sir, sir is going. Let's send him off. Anytime you have an opportunity, mothers hear me, you have an opportunity to raise your children. Don't utilize it now. Husband, you have an opportunity to bring up your children. Utilize it now. Every time God gives you an opportunity, be determined to make the best out of it. Whatever God has done these three days, may your portion be delivered to you. <laughs> this is our week of anniversary. May your own celebration start from now. In the name of Jesus. Whatever good thing you desire, before Saturday, you see it manifest in your life. 
from the depth of my heart, I pronounce you blessed. In the name of Jesus. Even things I can't say from my heart, I declare them to find a special in your life. Not one person that is a part of this week of spiritual empowerment will ever regret. God will wipe away your tears. Between now and weekend, you will dance. In the name of Jesus, you will hear good news. The God of heaven bless you. Remember you now for good. Peace wherever you go. In Jesus' mighty name.